Welcome to this special edition of the Military Wire Vision 2020's today's speaker series with Mike Schindler. And well, as everybody can see, I'm Joe Wonkelman filling in for Mike while he's out of town. And this series is where we get to interview America's most elite men and women who have served this country. We tell their stories of overcoming in hopes that you, the listener, will gain the aha moment you need and can apply to your life to overcome whatever adversity and crisis you're facing. I'm glad to say that today's episode is sponsored by Bone Frog Cellars, a premier and sacred wine founded by Navy SEAL Tim Crickshank. With each purchase, a portion of the proceeds go to the Navy SEAL Legacy Foundation to help support the families of the fallen SEALs. Check out bonefrogseller.com. I'll tell you what, you will enjoy. It's delicious. So, are you made for such a time as this? Will you be a survivor and be able to thrive, or are you going to be a statistic? With record level job losses and many individuals facing personal, professional, financial upheaval, uncertainty, and a gamut of plagues in this time, are you truly gonna be able to adapt and overcome? That's a question we all have to ask ourselves honestly. Do we have what it takes? And I am so excited, I'll be honest with you, I am, I am just beyond elated to have this, this expert, this subject matter expert to unpack these serious situations on our show today. Cade Courtley is a former Navy SEAL, sniper, CIA security contractor, best-selling author, host of Spike TV Discovery Channel, and now he's got this unbelievable podcast, Can You Survive This Podcast, with us today. And he is going to start breaking down what it takes. And, and, and Cade, honestly, thank you so much for coming on this show. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It, it is absolutely my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll tell you what, there is no better time to be talking to you. And uh, I, I appreciate that you're getting your message out there. I appreciate that you are, are who you are and willing to take your experience. I mean, a lot of us, I, I, me included, I, I take my, I, it's kind of like a former life and I see it and I can touch it, but then I kind of, you know, keep my distance from it. You're out there actually giving back to the community constantly trying to help people and and your heart is is just amazing and i can see your effort and everything you're doing so again thank you for that wow i, um, I, I appreciate that yeah we need more people like you um with that you know my first question is and, and i want to just hear a little bit about your backstory why you raised your right hand and 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 was what got you moving in the direction of, of becoming who you are today? I, I mean, I'm sure that's an, a novel in itself, but if you can give me just a snapshot of, of what or, and how you became who you are. You know, um, I think a lot of people, I would say at least me, my life has had a couple of very major turning points that has me sitting here talking to you today. And so I'll give you the nickel version of a couple of those, but I knew from an early age I wanted to serve. My grandfather was in the Army Air Corps. He was a flight instructor. That planted the seed when I was young. He took me up in a Cessna when I was seven. I was like, I want to be in aviation. I saw Top Gun and I said, I want to be a fighter pilot. Um, so I basically was going through, I got my pilot's license in high school because I just want to do everything I possibly could uh, heading towards that. Turning mm -hmm. point number one, Shortly after graduation from high school, three of my classmates were murdered by an escaped wow. convict. Holy and that had probably the single biggest effect on my life of any event in the world. Because at that point, I said to myself, you never know when your time is going to come. So make the most of it. And number two, it's pointless to be afraid. And that was the single biggest turning point in my life. I carried that thought process and that mindset with me through everything I did in the military and with the agency afterwards. Um, and then uh, I guess turning point number two, I'm in college and I'm on spring break and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm full top gun and I have an injury to my right eye. And it was, I was, I was incredibly lucky. I was blind for about 24 hours in my right eye. It came back. I actually just went and saw an ophthalmologist uh, last week, and she said, 
you should go buy lottery tickets because based on the injury you sustained, you're still 20, 25 and you're injured eye. But that wasn't good enough for me to be able to fly jets. So I did some soul searching and I still wanted to serve. And that's when I found out about the SEAL teams. And this is before the books and everything on the news and the movies. Uh, nobody really knew about it. I was fortunate enough. I went to the University of San Diego, which is where SEAL training is. And I started reaching out. I started reaching out to SEALs, talking to them. I was, you know, sneaking on the base and running the obstacle course on the weekends back before you couldn't sneak on bases anymore. And I was swimming in the ocean. And again, another major turning point because, I, you know, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. There must have been a reason my eye was injured, but it came back good enough for me to get through sniper school because I discovered the Navy SEALs, which I feel was tr truly at that time, my calling in life and the absolute best job in the world. So fast forward to today, I feel really blessed to have that the government spends so much time and money in my training and then the experiences I learned from my time in the SEALs and my time as a contractor. I now am at a point in my life where I can give some of that knowledge back to people to try and help them out if they find themselves in a life threatening situation. Yeah, and I'll be honest, the, the training that you get is unbelievable. And, and the one thing that when I'm talking to my SEAL friends and, and everything, it's that, that ability to conquer the mental portion. I mean, what you go through in, in, in BUDS is something that we all speculate about, but I have no perspective on. I, I, I mean, maybe I do from going through SEER school or, or even some of the things I did through, through flight school and, and whatnot, but it was nothing to the physical and mental where they're, they've got you out in these elements that you have to really conquer your mind if you wanna, sur if you wanna survive school. And so do you have any techniques or, or hints or, or suggestions on how to start training your mind when you're enduring that crisis and facing those challenges? Absolutely. It's a pretty simple concept. Now, I went through Buzz with some of the most physically fit, incredible studs. Mm -hmm. And most of those guys didn't make it to graduation. Wow. And the only reason I did is because I was so absolutely passionate about mm -hmm. becoming a SEAL. And if you're obsessed with something, this, the strongest muscle in the body, will make everything below get you there. I went through Hell Week with a partially broken leg. But this thing wanted it so bad that it got everything below my neck across the finish line and ultimately to graduation. So, folks, if you're looking for something to do in life, and it doesn't have to be SEAL training, mm -hmm. but if you are not passionate about it, there's not a very good chance of success or you're not going to be very happy in life. Oh, man, that is so true. That, that, that actually just rings out to me because that's the way I was as an Apache pilot. I mean... It, it, it was something, and it wasn't, it was the helicopter. I loved the helicopter. I loved, loved you know, we, everything we, about that. We loved that helicopter when you guys were over at too. So thank you. <laughs> well, and that's what I was going to say is like, it was working with you. It was working with the guys on the ground that I loved more. You know, it, it's, it's, it's being there in a time of crisis to help out and, and recognizing that, you know, going through crisis alone is a lot harder, but when you have a team around you Absolutely. and when you have that support and the tools you need to get through these, these intense situations, it makes it so much easier. And, and I'm sure you have got a lot of stories about the team, but I, I really wanna emphasize, you know, bringing that, that, that team around you, how do you do that? How do you build those bonds? Because the SEALs have it in, in, in a way that I even struggle to understand. You guys have a camaraderie, a, a brotherhood that is so strong, so thick, so united that, that nothing can break it. And, well, and just mad respect for that. No, I mean, there's just, you could not make it through buds alone. Yeah. No matter how bad you want it and how physically fit you are. You, you couldn't. And the great thing about buds is it forges that team mentality from day one. You can't be more than six feet away from your swim buddy or you get hammered. And it just, it literally forges. And I love that term forges the same way you make a, a sword by hammering it heating it up and then throwing it in cold water and repeating. That's what they did to us for seven months. And by the time you get through that training, if you don't have a team mentality, you probably didn't make it a week, number one, but it's just, it is ingrained in you. And then uh, myself in a leadership position, 
I had to take that to a next level because I had guys looking at me to make the right calls, to plan the right ops, and to execute it the right way. And that's just a whole nother level of responsibility where, you know, I, it, this is my family. I need to get my family home. And, you know, there was just an absolute absence of any selfish thought or action when you're in a job like that. And then to take it one step further based on, you know, our relationship with the guys in aviation, especially the guys in rotary like you, mm -hmm. it is incredible because we know if, if we get into trouble, you're going to help us out. And we know if, I hope you know, if you end up on the ground, we'll do anything we can to come get you guys. And uh, it, it just, again, it's another amazing relationship and the yep. teamwork thing. And if you don't have that mindset, you are never going to be successful uh, operationally and you probably won't be successful in that line of work. Oh yeah, and, and trust me, we knew it. I, I mean, we had a, a couple helicopters go down and, and your reaction, just all, everybody, I, I can't tell you how appreciative I am uh, of how you well. got our boys out of there. Um, and, and really listening to what you just said, it's amazing how I wish that translated into the communities today with the crisis we're facing, with the oh. pandemic, with the, with the things that we've got on, going on. You know, for me, it's about uniting the communities. It's about creating that, that forged uh, uh, teamwork as a community to overcome the, 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 the crisis you're facing rather than a lot of people, you know, social distancing, isolating, keeping themselves apart and, and struggling through. Um, and so if there is any way that we can get that message of, of teamwork, community, uh, uh, forging forward, it's, in my yeah, opinion, the only option. You, know, you hear a lot of guys, uh, veterans, that have some very difficult times transitioning out of the military. Yeah. And from a personal standpoint, my biggest difficulty was with transitioning is I went from the mindset and the teamwork mentality and being surrounded by elite people I trusted with my life out into the quote real world and I was like whoa where did it go and it was incredibly frustrating for me for a while and you know I guess I was lucky enough I had a, a mentor we call it a sea daddy uh, and he basically said all right well Cade what's the deal all right are you going to just grind your teeth uh, down to nothing and be frustrated for the rest of your life or are you going to say to yourself you know what I won the lottery but the money's gone and I'm going to press on and I was like all right, that, that was good, and I, I really appreciate that. But I think to answer your question to try and get this more contagious in a very, very raw and rough environment right now, if everybody could do one thing once a day to help somebody else out and to see how that would just boom. And it's such a simple task, and, you know, maybe I'm being naive, but it's really easy to do. I, you, you can walk across the street and bring your neighbor's trash cart in for. I mean, little things. So I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is such great, great advice. And, and I hope each of our listeners just, just really takes that to heart because it's a choice. It, it's not this, you know, dude, it's a choice to go out there and, and help. It's a choice to to, to have the discipline enough to, to look around you, be observant and say, hey, this needs to be done. Let's do something positive here rather than just disregarding it and hoping somebody else takes uh, uh, care of it. And, and so thank you for that advice. And man, I am just relating to everything you're saying because the transition out was losing my tribe, losing that, that purpose, that, that focus really sent me into an uncertain world that, uh, Man, I'll be honest, it was hard at times uh, because I, I trained so much for, for, for being the pilot, but then it's gone, you know, I, and, and I won the lottery, honestly, like you said, I won the lottery too. Uh, but with that being said, how did you regain that, that purpose? How did you regain that focus? Because I'm, I'm seeing it on your shows, I'm seeing it on your podcast, and you are passion driven and what you're bringing out and, and showing the world now is awe-inspiring and it's looking like you're getting back up to that lottery ticket again well i tell you what i it started with another turning point when my mentor gave me that and i was like you're right okay i you know in a way i was kind of playing a little bit of the victim card like oh but my life kind of sucks now compared to the way it used to be and i was like oh that is that stops right now 
So what am I going to do? I'm going to go out and find a new mission. It's not going to be like it was in the SEAL teams, but I will find a new thing that I'm passionate about. And it's something that can help people out and make a difference. And, you know, I feel in my, when I decided to start getting into the survival space, that felt good because I'm, I'm giving folks advice and uh, it started with the TV show and then he did the book and now I'm honored. And it's literally one of the best jobs in the world other than being the SEAL teams to be doing this podcast and, and giving information to folks that might help them if they find themselves in this situation. And one of the most rewarding things that has happened to me in the last several years I got an email from a lady. She was in Chicago. She was on the 13th floor at work. She said, there was a fire below us. I had just finished your book. I got all my coworkers out alive. Does it get any more rewarding than an email like that? And I've received several of those. Oh, and so that, I, I feel like that's my new lottery ticket. And if I can keep scratching one of those every couple of months or every month, then, then I feel like I'm on the right path. Oh, that is super cool. It's amazing when you can use the skills and, 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 and the experiences that you've had throughout life to, to have an impact on like that. I mean, I can't even imagine how that felt. Like, oh. man, I, I hope to achieve that someday because that, that's heroic. I mean, when you're saving people like that and you're helping them out, awesome job. So, so thank you. Now, with that, I mean, this is incredible. So what's the podcast about? Like, I, I want my, I want the listeners to just absolutely get engaged with your podcast, start learning these, these tactics, these skills to survive in, in crisis situations. So I, I'm sure there's a lot with it, but at the same time, can you really give them that, that, that understanding what you're trying to do with your podcast and what it's about, what they'll learn? Well, yeah. I mean, can you survive this podcast is what it's called. And our mission statement is simple. We are here to entertain, educate, and save lives. And it's as simple as that. And that's what we try and do with every single one. And yep. it's been incredible. I've gotten the chance, and we've only been at it for a couple months. I've mm -hmm. gotten the chance to talk to some of the most exceptional guests in the world. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I've spoken <laughs> with two active astronauts. I mean, they're incredible. I, you know, I just got a chance to speak with four-star General Grant, who at one point, was in charge of two thirds of the nuclear arsenal when he was in. I mean, we're talking exceptional people like that. And then, and then all over the spectrum in entertainment, uh, Zoe Bell, a female stunt coordinator, does all Tarantino's movies. Steve-O, I mean, which was, <laughs> I, I expected one thing from that podcast and it, and it got very serious and really intriguing. So these are the kind of amazing guests that I get to talk to. We try and focus it on survival situations, things they've dealt with, you know, obviously an astronaut, your first spacewalk, what it's like to be on top of a rocket when it lifts off. This is basically what we're talking about. And the format of the show is pretty basic. Mm -hmm. We spent about half the time doing really, really amazing interviews uh, with incredible guests. Mm -hmm. And then um, the second half, we do a thing which we call survival world. And what I basically do is I create a life-threatening survival situation or scenario. We'll throw our guest into it. They have 10 events to choose A or B, and we give them a score, and we find out after their hypothetical survival situation whether they made it through and survived the podcast. So I'm, I'm having a blast with it. I really hope people check it out. Oh, yeah, and, and I hope they do too, because from what I've listened to, it's so raw and real. And, and on that podcast, you're really hitting, it's going deeper than just surface level. And, and that's what I love about it. It's really getting into the, the, the mental, the, the emotional. I, I mean, when you're going through a, when you're going through a crisis, uh, emotions are the ones that want to attack you the most and trying to keep a level head during that moment of time, you know, it's amazing how your fight flight, you know, freeze responses all start, you know, interacting and, and conflicting with each other. Cause you really don't know what you're going to do. Well, it's, and it's crazy too. Uh, every single guest we've had that we put through survival world, I mean, we're talking about people who've worked in the most hazardous environments in the universe. And each one of them starts off like, ooh, I'm kind of nervous here. I'm like, y you did 40 hours of space blocks. Are you kidding me? We're on, we're on a podcast, but it's great. You really see the problem solving and is this yep. the right answer? Is this the wrong answer? So it's, it's hugely entertaining. And then at each, you know, again, at each event, I'll say, well, this was right and this is why. So we're giving folks additional 
education and information that they could apply if, God forbid, they find themselves in the middle of one of these situations. So oh, again, yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. It's, it's a dream job. Oh, I can totally see it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, how you're interacting. So I am just so appreciative of that. And, and, and with these survival skills, it's amazing how applicable they are to today. And, and with everything that's going on, I mean, it, at times it feels like the world around us is just crumbling. What we knew isn't going to be what we know. And, and it's this type of idea or it's this idea of perseverance, which I don't think a lot of people really understand right now. And, and, and it's that which is missing in today's society. We, we got what it takes. We can do it. And we just have to learn how to persevere again. And so what you're doing on the show, in my opinion, just, just highlights that and, and puts it out in a banner. We, we can persevere. And so how has perseverance just influenced your life? I, look, you nailed it real quick with what you said on that. The common thread with everybody, everybody I've interviewed that has been through an incredible survival situation, a real one, mm -hmm. the common thread was always never quit, keep working the problem. I mean, I'm talking about a guy who was on a life raft, a six foot life raft, adrift for 76 days in the Atlantic. Never quit, keep working the problem. You don't have to be on a life raft to apply that to everybody's daily life, yeah. okay? Bring it down a notch. What is my real problem right now? How am I going to solve it? Okay, I just fixed that issue. It was at work, it was a relationship, solved. What's my next problem? Don't quit. It's again, it seems basic, like try and help somebody out once a day, but it works. It really does. Now, as far as I, you know, again, I told you about some major turning points in my life mm -hmm. and you can't get through SEAL training if you're not passionate. Mm -hmm. And there's no, there was no point in being scared while I was in the military because it just might be my day. Maybe I'm an inch too far to the right and I catch that round. Maybe I step a little bit too far to the left and I get blown up. So carry on and then seize the day. Make it count. Oh, uh, no better advice. I, I mean, for everybody who's listening, I, I'm telling you right now, these are the nuggets that are going to get you to, to your best year. These are the nuggets that are going to get you to overcome, to persevere, to, to become that person you want to be. I, I mean, you're talking about, you're hearing Kay talk about this lottery ticket. If you want yours, listen here, because this is what, this is what you have to do. And this is exactly what I had to do. And I'm still learning it at the same time. You know, I, I, I've, I've been through so much, but I'm still refining. And so I, I'm sure you're the same way. What are you well, absolutely. doing? You, you don't just stop with that concept. It's a yep. daily grind. And some days it really is a grind. But yeah. if you don't quit, you'll get to the next day and it'll probably be a better day. Oh man, I wish community, especially where we're located, uh, Mike and I over in Seattle, yeah. I wish that there was just an audience down there in, in Capitol Hill that would listen to this because it's not about being the victim. Like you said, that stops right here. Let's learn how to persevere. Let's move forward. Let's drive this home. And, and what you're doing is just absolutely amazing. So everybody listening right now, I, I'm telling you, just stop what you're doing. Go to your podcast. Check out Can You Survive This Podcast. Subscribe to it. And please start listening because that is where you're going to get the information, the knowledge, the understanding on how to become who you want to become and how to overcome the, the craziness of today, but also the problems of tomorrow because I'm going to be real with you. They're going to be here. We're going to have them. You know, once this one's done, it's just going to be a new page, but let, let's continue to, to really push forward and becoming a, a country of progress, a people who persevere. And, and I'm telling you again, check Kate out because this, just from talking to you, I understand you have a story and I am looking forward to hearing more about it because, uh, to get to your mindset, to get to your mentality, it takes a lot. And so I've just got, you know, one last question. Uh, uh, where were you born and how did that influence you? Well, I was born in Columbus, Ohio, but my folks moved to um, Boulder, Colorado shortly thereafter. <laughs> and I don't like admitting that to too many people, but it's a very different Boulder now than it was when I grew up there. And the best part about growing up in a place like Colorado, mountains, Hiking, hunting, yep. fishing, 
dealing with cold weather, uh, navigation. It created an amazing foundation for me for what I ultimately ended up doing in the military. And for that, I was really happy. That and the fact that my dad, you know, he, he would challenge me at an early age. He mm -hmm. would purposely get the Jeep stuck when I was five and say, what are you going to do? He would drop me off five miles away and say, here's a compass. Sun's going down. Mm -hmm. Some people, you probably can get away with that now because there would be a slew of lawyers and uh, family services coming. <laughs> but it worked for me. It was great. Mm -hmm. And so that would be probably the biggest impact of growing up in an amazing state like Colorado. That is so crazy. I'm from Fort Collins, born and raised. Oh, no Fort way. Collins. Yeah, so, no. I lived up there for a couple of years. Okay, yeah. So I'm very familiar with Boulder and 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 everything that's there. And it's amazing how the environment, what you surround yourself, really does influence who you become. You know, and if you if you and, take advantage of it, yeah, if you take advantage of it. If you stay in the basement, play video games, you could be in any city. But True. if you take advantage of what you got around you, you yeah. know, again, seizing the day, learning something new, absolutely. Yeah, that is so cool. So another connection. I love it. I love, love what you're saying. And so again, you know, everybody listening, just make sure that you check out this new podcast. Can you survive this podcast? It is something that is going to be able, it's going to be revolutionary in your life. If you listen, you internalize it. And then you ask yourself the question, how can I implement these lessons into my life to make a better tomorrow? You know, Cade, thank you so much for coming on the Military Wire. I mean, this interview was absolutely just, it made my day. And, and, and listening to you, I can't wait till our next conversation. And, and thank you again. And so as I'm ending, I just want to make sure that everybody know who, if you're out there and you are ready to answer the call, if you're ready to become one of those, those people who survives and thrives in crisis rather than the statistic, and, and discover what your next mission is. Discover that purpose. Please check out Operation Military Family. We are here about bringing these elite men and women into our community, creating that, that forging that bond together so that we can progress and, and, and make progress into tomorrow. Kay, thank you again for everything that you're doing. Thank you for just being a hero, both in service, but then also now in the community. And I am, man, just blown away by your testimony. I, well, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. I really did. Awesome. It was awesome. Dude, take care. Thank you again. We'll talk soon, I hope. Awesome. Take care, bud. All right. Yep. Bye.